Hello, I am Gabriel. I am lead pastor of Grace Communion Richardson. And I just want to welcome you to our Youth Sunday worship stream. Uh, we call it the Youth Sunday because the first Sunday of the month. Uh, that's the name we give to the first Sunday of each month with our focus on the youth. Welcome to this worship stream. Here at Grace Communion Richardson, we seek to know Jesus and to make him known through worship, through family fellowship, and through neighborhood engagements, all out of the compelling love of God poured in our hearts through Jesus Christ and by the power of his Holy Spirit. We would love to hear from you if you have any comments, and we would gladly pray for and with you uh, if you have any prayer requests. So please do not hesitate to send us uh, any prayer requests that you may have. Today is the second Sunday of Advent. We are in the Advent season. Advent simply means arrival or coming. And it is an opportunity for us as Christians to celebrate the coming of our Lord the incarnation of God through his son Jesus and Christmas uh, celebrates that with a birth and then we also remember that he's promised to come again to return with the fullness of the promises of God that are in him in Jesus and then in between the two we remember that he is with us he is present with us uh, through the indwelling, through the coming of the Holy Spirit in our hearts that indwells us, that leads us, that is our connector, our coach, our companion. And the theme for this second Sunday of Advent is peace. Do you have peace? Jesus is our peace. He gives us his peace even in the face of hardships and challenges. And he calls us to share his peace uh, with others around us, that we may be peacemakers. So as we look forward to the birth of the Prince of Peace, let us receive his peace and spread it in the way we think, in the words we use, in the actions that we undertake, that affect others, with our family members and friends, with our colleagues at work, with our neighbors on the road, and in the various ways that people are involved with us and us with them in our spheres of influence. Last week I shared with you about the Ministry Avenue of Faith, what Christian faith is that confident, assured, and trust in God that is given to us and that we receive through Jesus Christ. This trust in God to be who He is and to do what He says. That faith is relational. And today I want to continue on that subject and look at the, some of the practical implications of the ministry avenue of faith uh, as individuals as well as as a congregation in our congregational life. But right now, I want to speak primarily to Grace Communion Richardson members, supporters, and those of you out there who share our values. And I want to say thank you for your generous financial support, as well as for your prayers uh, throughout this very difficult year, challenging year. I uh, thank you for your donations. As you know, your donations are tax deductible, and they help in the gospel effort of sharing the hope, the faith and love of Jesus uh, with others who desperately need it. Uh, if you are out there and are moved uh, to participate with us in this calling, to participate with us in the ministry 
the mission, the life, and the love of Jesus. Uh, you can see on the screen the various ways that you can uh, donate. Thank you so very much, and God bless. Now, I want to invite you to join our youth praise team uh, for a praise song. And then we will, we're going to have the lighting of the peace candle, as well as some scripture reading and prayer by the Moya family. And then I will come back with the main message for today. Please stay with us.
on happy Advent season. As we go into the second week of Advent, we look forward to God's kingdom, which, which arrived with Jesus Christ and is full of godly peace and joy. Isaiah chapter 11, verses 1 through 16. A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse, and from his roots a branch will bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and of understanding, the spirit of counsel and of might, the spirit of the knowledge and fear of the Lord, and he will delight in the fear of the Lord. He will not judge by what he sees with his eyes or decide what he hears with his ears, but with righteousness he will judge the needy, with justice he will give decisions for the poor of the earth. He will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he will slay the wicked. Righteousness will be his belt, and faithfulness the sash around his waist. The wolf will live with the lamb, the leopard will lie down with the goat, the calf and the lion and the yearling together, and a little child will lead them. The cow will feed with the bear, their young will lie down together, and the lion will eat straw like the ox. The infant will play near the cobra's den, and the young child will put its hand into the viper's nest. They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain. For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the Lord as the water covers the sea. In that day, the root of Jesse will stand as a banner, for the peoples, the nations, will rally to him, and his resting place will be glorious. In that day, the Lord will reach out his hand a second time to reclaim the surviving remnant of his people from Assyria, from Lower Egypt, from Upper Egypt, from Cush, from Elam, from Babylonia, from Hamath, and from the islands of the Mediterranean. He will raise a banner for the nations and gather the exiles of Israel. He will assemble the scattered people of Judah from the four quarters of the earth. Ephraim's jealousy will vanish and Judah's enemies will be destroyed. Ephraim will not be jealous of Judah, nor Judah hostile towards Ephraim. They will swoop down the slopes of Philistia to the west. Together they will plunder the people to the east. They will subdue Edom and Moab, and the Ammonites will be subject to them. The Lord will dry up the gulf of the Egyptian sea with a scorching wind. He will sweep his hand over the Euphrates, Euphrates River. He will break it up into seven streams so that anyone can cross over in sandals. There will be a highway for, from, for the revenant of his people that is left in Assyria, as there was for Israel when they come up from Egypt. Let us pray. Almighty and loving Father and all-powerful God, as we enter the second week of Advent and as we light the hope and peace candles, we humbly ask that you give us peace in our hearts and hope in your kingdom. We are living in a very challenging world with so many things outside of our control. Help us to focus our thoughts and hearts to you, trusting that you are in control and that you will always take care of us. Encourage us to reach out to others as well. Our families, friends, neighbors, co-workers, classmates, and be an example of your goodness and love. Show us your peace and our, your humble ways and help us, Father, to listen and be still and be at peace. Thank you so much for being you. In Jesus' powerful name we pray, amen. All right, for the main message, I want, as I said earlier, to uh, for us to look at some of the practical implications of living out our faith. Last week, I looked at what faith is, and we will do a little bit of a, of a reminder of what we talked about last week. But as Grace Communion Richardson, we live out our mission and our vision to know Jesus and to make him known through worship, through family fellowship, and through neighborhood engagements, through the power of the Holy Spirit, and through the ministry avenues of hope, faith, and love. Now, we see this, these ministry avenues of hope, faith, and love as our relational pathway or our discipleship pathway, the ways that we live out our vision and mission and the ways that we live out who we are in Christ, our identity 
in him. Last week, I looked at what faith is. In previous Sundays, I had looked at what hope is. Today, we are going to spend a little bit more time on some of the practical implications of faith, living out our faith. Last week, I asked the question, what is faith? And I just want us to remind ourselves a little bit about that. What is faith? According to the writer of Hebrews, we saw that the Christian faith is confidence in what we hope for and being assured of what we don't see. And I explain that is in Hebrews chapter 11 and verses 1 through 3 and verse 6 is where what we looked at last week. And I explained that this assurance that we have is captured in what we hold on to. In other words, faith is what we have as we wait for what we hope for. The writer of Hebrews reminds us that without this faith, it is impossible to please God. So anything we do without faith, without the understanding and trust in the sovereignty, in the love, and in the creative power of God, in Jesus, through His Spirit, is sin. And, and that's how Paul describes it in Romans chapter 14 and in verse 23. So faith is really a very important subject to understand. It is what underpins our identity in Jesus, who we are, whose we are, and how we live out our identity in Jesus. In other words, faith is what we have what we hold on to as we await what we hope for. And when, we, when I say we await, it is not a passive waiting. It is an active waiting because hope is not passive. Hope is active. Hope spurs to action. Hope motivates, perseveres, endures, is action-oriented. And so when I talk about waiting for what we hope for, we're really talking about an active waiting. In other words, faith is holding on to Jesus. It is Jesus that we hold on to as we go on in life, waiting for the fullness of God's promises to us, for us, in Christ. Faith in and of Jesus is trust in who God is in Jesus and what he stands for and promises. Faith is relational and communal. Faith is personal, not private. So faith is shared and it describes a community of trust in relationship together in Christ through the Spirit. Faith, again, is personal, but it is not private. This is important because when we talk about the practical implications of faith, we see the import of faith as relational. Jesus is our hope and the center of our worship because we share in his faith. We trust in Jesus. Faith or trust in Jesus motivates our actions, motivates our thoughts, our feelings. Like hope and love, faith is relational and communal. We do faith together. Faith is not meant to be an island by itself somewhere. Uh, we do it together. And we also saw in Romans chapter 10 and in verse 17 how God gifts us this faith. And faith is a gift. It is not something that we conjure up on our own. We cannot just grow our faith on our own, so to speak, or grasp at faith on our own just by sheer power of will. No. Uh, faith is is something that God gifts us 
as we have a relationship with him through his son and by the power of his spirit. So in Romans chapter 10, we saw uh, what Paul says about that, how God gifts us his faith, the faith of Jesus. And in Romans 10, Paul is basically sharing the strategy, if you, may, if, you, if you like, that God is using in bringing about the destiny that he has for all of humanity. The strategy that he's using in uh, inviting and calling all of us to participate in what he is doing in, with, and through his son, Jesus Christ. The strategy about the sharing of the good news, the gospel, of his love for us and the salvation that he gives to us freely through his son Jesus. And so Romans 10 is talking about this, about how it is all about Jesus. Jesus is the central focus of God's action in our lives. Jesus is the central focus of God's love in our lives. And so in Romans 10 Paul talks about if you confess Jesus as Lord, Right? And then we break into his thought and he says in verse 17, Romans chapter 10, the Apostle Paul writes, Consequently, faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word about Christ. Now, you may look at some other translations of this verse, and they all boil down to the same thing. What the Apostle Paul is saying here is that faith, we receive and experience faith and live out faith within the context of the story of Jesus Christ, within the context of the story of God's love for us in Christ Jesus. So that our stories of faith, our stories of belief, our stories of transformation are subsumed in the story of Jesus. In this relationship with Jesus, who he is, how he is, whose we are, how we are, we grow in faith. We come to understand the nature of God, the character of God, the heart of God. We accept who God is as the sovereign creator God, the great I am. We accept that this great I am, this sovereign creator God, who is all powerful, almighty, is love, is good, is gracious and compassionate. He is a provider and nurturer. He is benevolent. We accept the truth that God is worthy. God has value and he shares that worth and that value with us through the love that he places on us. And as a result of this knowing relationship of who God is revealed in Jesus and all the promises that he has for us in Christ, we have trust in him. Especially as we see that hand of God, that goodness of God, that graciousness of God in our own lives, in relationship with Jesus Christ, we trust Him. We trust that He is faithful, that He is a being of His Word. That what God says happens because He is all-powerful, the Creator God. But not only is He all-powerful and Creator, but He is also good and He is love. And we trust that so that even when we face things that are impossible in terms of our circumstances and challenges, we trust God. We trust Jesus that he's got it. Even when we are hurting, even when it seems that we are not getting the answers that we look for, we trust because we know that God is good and God is faithful. That is faith. And that is faith that comes out of this relationship of knowing. So the more we know Jesus, the more we grow our faith. And friends, the more we know Jesus comes not just by our singular efforts at study and prayer, 
but it includes a shared effort at study and prayer and growing in relationship with Jesus Christ, with others together. The more we hear the story of friends, of brothers and sisters, of God's goodness and God's love in their lives, the more we grow in our faith, the more our faith is reinforced. So we grow in faith through the feeding on the written word, which reveals to us this message of who God is in Jesus, which points us to the living word, who is Jesus. And then through the sharing of our lives with others, a life-on-life -life relationship with others in small groups and so on, we continue to support and encourage each other in growing in the grace and in the knowledge of Jesus. That's what discipleship is about. So when Jesus says, go and make disciples, he is saying, go and introduce me to others so that we will have a relationship together a growing relationship together of knowing who I am and how I am and who you are and whose you are. That's what discipleship is about. And we grow in that grace and knowledge of Jesus together. We do not all have that understanding. We share the understanding together. We grow in knowing him in order to make him known. We are called to a life on life relationship with Jesus and with one another. So we have in our church congregation, champions or coordinators, coordinators as I said, of the ministry avenues of hope, faith, and love. And these ministry avenues of hope, faith, and love drive our vision and mission of knowing Jesus and making him known through the Spirit's power. And I had a conversation with our Faith Avenue champion, uh, Terry, uh, just as I did last time with our uh, Hope Avenue champion, Richard. I had a conversation with Terry as well about her coordination of our ministry avenue of faith. What it looks like as we strive to live it out within our congregation. And I want to share excerpts uh, of that conversation with Terry uh, with you. I am here with a very good friend of the family, one of the leaders of our church congregation, Grace Communion Richardson. She also happens to be the Faith Avenue champion. Terry, it's good to see you. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. Thank you for having me. All right. We're here to just talk about the Faith Avenue, what it means and uh, what that looks like. What is faith? for you and specifically what's the faith avenue in the context of our church life? Christian faith is believing in God, believing in his promises and relying on his faithfulness to bring about those promises that he gives us. So we have this incredible privilege of having a relationship with God that is based on trust and belief yes. in him. What does this belief, what does this relationship of trust and belief look like? Well, in Grace Communion Richardson, we do small groups. We do life on life, discipleship making. We want to build relationships with each other and with, with Jesus and with God. We want to really get to know each other. We can bond. We have discipleship classes. We have small groups that meet before COVID in our, in our homes, we also right now during COVID, we're doing a lot of Zoom meetings, a whole lot of Zoom meetings to keep everybody connected with the body. We do retreats. We actually just recently had a leadership retreat, yeah. which was awesome bonding, especially since we haven't seen each other in so many months. It was great to be able to be outside and safely do this and create deeper relationships not only with each other, but with the Spirit, and, and yeah. that, was just, that was lovely. 
All right. I remember the leadership retreat. That was that was very restful for me personally, as well as very enjoyable in terms of the fellowship and the camaraderie that we enjoyed. So you mentioned Zoom meetings, and how does this impact our young people? Well, we have youth classes, and they are continuing on Zoom right now. We have um, children's classes and, and the teens are, are meeting. We also have community groups that we do okay. that we're hoping to, to build more. Talk is something that we have. Those are discussion um, small groups. Our, all of our small groups, whether they're on Zoom or whether they're in person, they're for the, the community as well as the church. Okay. It's, it's, for, it's open for everybody. All right. These faith activities, these activities of trust, and I've heard you use the word relationships uh, quite a bit. So these are avenues for building relationships because we trust in God, because we believe in who He is. And it is not just confined to us as church members, Correct. you're saying it is it's available to, to our neighborhood and to the community as well. Correct. We want to, to love on each other, but we also want to love on our community. Okay. So when I think about faith, sometimes uh, people think faith is just what you believe. We sometimes fail to recognize that it's, it's relational. Very relational. And that's what you are describing to, to me right now. Yes. Relational with each other as well as and, you know, upwards to, to God. Right. Yes. And something that we grow in, yes. working together, helping yes. each other, life on life. Very much, yes. All right. All right. Are you doing this all by yourself as the, <laughs> as the uh, Faith Avenue uh, coordinator or champion? I'm a coordinator. <laughs> I'm a champion, though. I do not. I have two teams. Okay. I have each of the leaders of the small group, the youth, the prayer meetings. I have retreat specialists. <laughs> so each of those groups have, has a leader, and I help with that. And I also have another team for LifeNet, which is love and full expression. Mm -hmm. And this is loving from the inside out. And our church is not just here in Richardson, it's the Metroplex, mm -hmm. and so we have nine geographic areas, and so in each of those areas we have a group leader okay. who re right now is reaching out to the members to be sure that they are still connected, especially if mm -hmm. they don't have internet or something. We yeah. want to make sure that they are included still during this time. So I do have two teams that I work right. with, yes. All right. We have a living out of our faith as a community and building each other up and helping each other along the way. As you look forward to the end of this year, and 2020 has been really an interesting year, yes, to it put has. it mildly. <laughs> Looking forward to 2021, what, what one thing are you looking forward to uh, seeing happen or sharing uh, in the Faith Avenue? We have several activities coming up, a couple this year as well as, as next year, but if I'm going to talk about one, I'd say Easter. It's not really that far away, you know, life is just speeding that by us, so if we can do in-person Easter egg hunt for the kids, we would love to do that. If we're unable to do that, then we do have a backup plan where we'll have big, giant cardboard eggs that people can go around and and take selfies of and, and do a virtual Easter egg hunt. So we're looking forward to doing that and involving the community as well as our church members with that. Easter 2021, Yes. as we look forward to a, a better year with God's help in 2021. Yes. Oh, that is great. Well, thank you so very much, Terry, for taking the time for us to have this chat and to share about the Faith Avenue. Thank you for having All right. me. So thank you to Th Terry for uh, that conversation. I thought, I hope that you found it illuminating uh, about what faith is. And as you could hear and see from the conversation, uh, faith is really quite relational. Uh, it is not just academic belief in God. It's a relationship with Him and with others. And we grow in that. And this is what we are presented with at the founding of the church in Acts chapter 2. In Acts chapter 2, we read how the church founded is living out a life of faith. This is a description 
of the fellowship of the faithful or the community of believers. And we do well to learn from this example of the first church, so to speak, the foundational church, the foundational visible body of Jesus in Acts chapter 2 and you know the story in Acts 2 I hope you are familiar with it is describing the day of Pentecost and the coming and receiving of the Holy Spirit uh, in a visible way and the preaching of the gospel before and after this receipt of the Holy Spirit uh, by the apostles specifically Peter as the spokesperson at that time and then the response of the crowd to what they saw in the um, the coming of the Spirit and in the preaching of the gospel by Peter and it resulted in I think about 3,000 men being baptized that day and this is how they lived the body life afterwards and we break into the thought into the narration in verse 42 the second chapter of acts verse 42 so they the founding founded church devoted themselves to the apostles teaching and to fellowship to the breaking of bread and to prayer everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles all the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all of the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. That's a, a beautiful picture of community that is painted here in Acts chapter 2, verses 42 to 47. It's a beautiful picture of living out the body life in faith. It's a beautiful picture of a community of believers, a fellowship of the faithful living out the body life together and you see some of the elements of what that looked like some of which uh, Terry shared in that conversation that I had with her it was a teaching and learning together is one of the elements so they devoted themselves to that so in groups because you remember there are about 3,000 here 3,000 plus so they Learn together. They studied together. The apostles' teaching was shared together. They had fellowship together. They ate together. They prayed together. They lived life together. One-on-one -on -one -on -one life together. They helped each other. They supported each other. Those who had needs were helped with their particular needs. They saw themselves as brothers and sisters in Christ and they shared what they had together, both physical, material, as well as spiritual things that they shared together. Why? Because they believed in God. They believed in Jesus and they believed that God loves not just them, as individuals but the person next to them and the person out there who was not yet part of them they believed that God's love was for all and they were willing to grow in the knowledge of who God is and to share with each other and with others in their sphere of influence that is a life of faith friends it is a life of trust it is a life of belief, recognizing that even when it is tough, that you're not alone, that God is with you, that He is the eternal, and the eternal has the last word. And His word is life. His word is love. His word 
is good. His word is victory. It's a life of total dependence on Jesus as the center of our lives. That's a life of faith. It is the kind of life that the champions of faith lived, as we read in Hebrews chapter 11. You know, it's called the heroes of faith in Hebrews, all the various people mentioned there. But it's not only those in Hebrews 11. Throughout scripture, we see champions and heroes of faith. Like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego confronted by Nebuchadnezzar and, and the powerful and their response to the powerful. It is the faith of the little boy who will give his five loaves and two fish to Jesus to share with the crowd. It is the faith of one who will give a cup of water in the name of Jesus to someone who is thirsty. What faith is that? Well, it is a faith that recognizes the goodness of God, that receives the goodness of God, and shares it with others. That is what it means to grow in the grace and knowledge of Jesus. Because God's grace towards us, friends, is not just academic. It's not just head knowledge. It is not just the forgiveness of our sins in the abstract. But it is also a restoring of relationships. A building of relationships, of relationships of love. And when we understand that Jesus is the center of our lives, then we are energized to proclaim Him. He is the banner that we proclaim. We are energized to share Him in this wilderness of pain. We do this life together, friends, with each other and with others that we welcome in hope. We grow together. We pray together. We study together. We fellowship together. We are family together. We share time together in retreats, in Bible studies, in prayers. We look out for each other and for our neighbors because we are better together in faith in Jesus who joins us together through His Spirit. So are you a person of faith? How are you growing in that faith? Who are you doing life with in faith? Are you a part of a small group doing life together regularly, supporting Supported by and supporting each other. Are you a voice in the wilderness proclaiming Jesus as our hope, as our Lord, and as the good God who has our backs? Who loves us? And are you doing so in faith? I pray you do. And I pray that you will reach out if you are not and want to. Because there are others in this journey who welcome you in hope. Amen. I hope that I will see you next Sunday as we continue on this journey, looking at the ministry avenue of love. What love is, what the incredible love of God is, and how he shares that with us through Jesus, his son. And as we get to know that, making him known with others. Sharing his love, sharing his faith, sharing his hope. Please join our youth praise team now as they share a last song. And then I'll see you uh, next time. God willing. God bless. that I face, stronger than the power of the grave, constant in the trial and the change, one thing remains, one thing. Fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. Your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. Your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me.
Yes, it overwhelms and satisfies my soul And I never ever have to be afraid One thing remains Your love never fails, it never gives up It never runs out on me It never runs out on me Your love never fails It never gives up It never runs out on me Your love never fails It never gives up It never runs out on me It never gives up, it never runs out on me Your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me Your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me Your I want to invite you to a Zoom discussion after this message. The ID is on the screen. Uh, if you need to, to call using the phone, the phone number is on your screen as well. If you are watching on Facebook, the link that you can click on to join Zoom is in the description. If you are watching from our website, the link is on top of the video. I look forward to, to meeting you uh, on Zoom for discussion and for fellowship. God bless.